Hello and welcome. We're here with Elliot Pollock, founder CEO of Text Appeal, and Cindy Gallup, um, the ex-chairman BBH New York, and founder and CEO If We Run the World and MakeLoveNotPorn.com. Hello and welcome. Hello. So you you both held a seminar here on Sunday called Culture Shocks: Porn, Youth, and Brands. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, the seminar and what, what you were talking about? Yeah, Text Appeal is specialized in cross, helping global brands cross the borders of culture and language around the world. And Can Alliance has invited us um, over the past years to do a seminar on cross-cultural topic. And this year we thought it would be interesting to show examples of how sex is being used in advertising in different countries and cultures around the world, what the stereotypes are that are being um, used by advertising agencies and brands, but also to go beyond the stereotypes and discuss with Cindy, and that's why with Cindy we thought this this would be a very good idea to bring it out to the, to the advertising festival here, what the reality is of pornography today and why this is important. And it was quite difficult actually to, um, uh, we wanted to have a panel originally of um, advertisers who would join us and maybe Cindy can say why that didn't happen. Um, but we're very glad that it's, we've been able to do for the very first time a seminar at an advertising festival on the topic of porn. So from that, what was the rationale behind holding this seminar this year? Why do you think they decided to run this topic this year and not before? I don't know personally why it hasn't been addressed before. The reason it was addressed is because Cindy and I decided to submit it to the festival and to the credit of the festival they agreed to do it. Okay, my next question. Um, I was absolutely shocked to hear that according to data two years ago the average age of a child's first exposure to hardcore pornography online is 11 years old and possibly now even eight years old the first factor that comes to mind for, for the, the reason for this is the growth of the internet but what other factors do you think um, are driving children to expose to pornography and sex at such a young age I date younger men and through dating younger men, I encountered very directly what happens when porn is more freely and widely available via the internet than ever before, while at the same time as a society, we don't talk about sex, which is that porn becomes default sex education. So um, I founded MakeLoveNotPorn.com three and a half years ago, which is a website that posts the myths of hardcore porn and balances them with the reality. The construct is porn world, real world. But the important thing to stress is that Make Love Not Porn is not anti-porn. I'm pro-porn, I watch it myself. The issue I'm tackling is not porn. The issue I'm tackling is the complete lack in our society of an open, healthy dialogue around sex and porn, which would then allow people to bring a real-world mindset when they view artificial entertainment. My entire message with Make Love Not Porn boils down to talk about it. That's what I exhort everybody to do, because that is the answer to the creeping ubiquity of porn, and it's also what I want the advertising industry to do in order to really understand the consumers they're addressing today and how to encourage a healthier, more open approach to sexuality and relationships. So do you think it's a good thing or not that more brand messages are becoming more sexualized? It's really important to stress this is not about sex and advertising. Um, the examples Elliot showed um, on Sunday of ads that use sex are absolutely driven by the pornification of culture and the man manifestation of what we don't talk about in all sorts of ways within entertainment, TV and ads. Um, actually, um, what I'm really exhorting the industry to do is to understand people better and to understand the impact of this on our consumers because currently planners never you know, sit down and discuss their target audiences as, yep, we talk to 8 and 24-year-old males and this is what they do. And by the way, they're watching between two to six hours of porn day and night and this is the impact it has on their relationships and how they think about women. Nobody ever does that. And until we do, we won't be treating sex um, in the same way that we should we do any other form of consumer behaviour, which is a perfectly natural, healthy thing that everybody does. And acknowledge that in the way that we craft communications that reflect a healthier perspective on it. So what action would you like the people who came to your seminar to take, to take after listening to what you had to say at your seminar? In that I gave the audience at Cannes on Sunday um, a number of directives, um, but the one I'll highlight for you guys is the new creativity is female-informed.
So um, the majority of advertising is targeted at women because women are the majority purchasers or the majority influencers of purchasers across every sector. Women form the majority of users of social networks. Women are the majority of people expressing themselves as digital personas online. Yet the majority of advertising targeted at women is created in industry by men. And here at Cannes, the majority of decisions as to what creativity is effective and should be celebrated are made by men. If you look at the jurors and the lineups and hunt very hard for the women within them. And so I urge the audience to really work all of them from the highest to the lowest in our industry to bring more women into the process of crafting communications that reflects a more gender equal perspective on life, love, sexuality and relationships. So am I right in thinking that you would like more marketers and advertisers to be more realistic and informed um, with their creative messaging? Actually, one of the things I talked about on Sunday was the fact that the time has come to move beyond stereotypes. Stereotypes have been the bread and butter of our industry for far too long, and they have outlived their usefulness. The new creativity is about real, and about actually making people feel a relevance and an empathy that is often missing in advertising that defaults to stereotypical depictions, like a lot of the ads that Elliot showed that are using sex and advertising. Music